Hello, in this video I'm going to walk you through this step-by-step -step guide on how to build this 14-foot trampoline by Triple Tree. These are all of the parts needed as you see here, and by the end of this video we'll successfully turn this into this. Let's get started. Now, throughout the video, I'm going to give you tips on how to make this build much easier, but first, I highly recommend that you have a minimum of two people to successfully set this up. Even the two boxes that the trampoline parts are shipped in are very heavy and may require two people just to move. It is possible to do it alone, but there are some parts of the assembly that will be challenging. The first tip I will share has to do with the tools provided. You will get a Phillips screwdriver, two-sided wrench, as well as two spring pulling tools and two pairs of gloves. To simplify the assembly, I highly recommend using a power drill with a Phillips bit and a socket wrench with both 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter sized sockets. I also highly recommend a Sharpie marker, more on that later, and a nicer pair of gloves that will allow for a solid grip as you'll need to twist some of these parts and the free gloves provided may slip more easily. First thing is first, let's make sure you have all the parts. I recommend laying everything out on the yard where you plan to build the trampoline and visually inspect the condition of all the parts and count them to ensure they match with all the parts shown on page four and five. If you have missing parts or damaged parts, stop and contact the seller. You can find their information at the bottom of page one. Once you've confirmed all the parts are accounted for and in good condition, proceed to page six, where there are some bullet points to read before the assembly. For step one, as listed on page seven, we're going to build the base legs and support base. First thing is to slide the short vertical leg extensions onto the leg base and line the screw holes up as shown here. You will repeat this for all four base leg assemblies, then set these aside. For step two, I'm going to modify the instructions to give you the easier way to set this up. Now, you may have seen in the box that your frame tubes may or may not have the T-joints already connected. In my case, they were not. So we're going to first do a rough layout of the trampoline base with all the curved frame tubes shaped in a circle with the holes on each curved frame tube bar facing up. Also make sure the four leg base assemblies are placed inside of the round frame we just laid out. And here's a tip for attaching the T-joints. When connecting the two curved frame tubes, you'll notice one end is wider or thicker than the other. Slide the T-joint with the flat side facing up and the pull end facing down over the thicker end first as you see here. Then the thinner end from the other curved frame tube will slide into the other end of the frame tube with the T-joint now placed over both. Next, repeat this step and attach the tubes together at each T-joint and when you get to the last set, you'll see that it does not fit easily. This is where you'll need the other person to push on the opposite side to give enough flex in the tubes to attach the final T-joint. Here's another tip. If you are by yourself, you can prop the opposite end against a stationary object like a fence or a patio foundation to achieve the same effect. Next is step three, found on page eight, where we will install the four base leg assemblies into the ring frame we just built. Each base leg will have a red sticker stating to keep that side facing inwards towards the middle of the trampoline. You will simply push the legs into each set of T-joints and make sure that this is done on flat level ground. Step four can be found on page nine where it shows how to install the balance bars using the leg fixing screws as you see shown here. Be sure that the balance bars are placed so that they are connecting leg to leg and not inside of one set of legs for one leg base assembly. Also be sure the balance bar is attached on the inside of the trampoline legs, not on the outside. Simply take the screw and you'll notice that they have a squared off end that's going to lock into the squared hole of the tube. On the inside of the frame you will have the balance bar piece, then attach the washer followed by the nut. Attach all of the balance bars loosely until all four are installed, then you can use the wrench tool provided to tighten the nuts. Again, you can save a ton of time by using a socket wrench and a 10 millimeter socket to tighten all of the nuts. Now for step five, which is on page 10, we are going to attach the bottom safety poles to the outside of the vertical leg extension. There is an important part not listed in the instructions that you will need to be aware of first. Each bottom safety pole has a hole located at the top on one side only. You will want to install each of these where the drilled hole is facing on the right side of the pole. 
This will make a difference later in the assembly steps. Again, take the screw with the squared off end that will lock into the squared hole of the vertical leg extension, line up the bottom safety pole with the T-joints, and you want to be sure they are mounted on the outsides of the frame. Then you'll place a bolt into each of the holes going all the way through the pole. Then place your plastic bushing pad between the safety pole and the bottom leg. Make sure the screws are pushed all the way in and locked into the square holes, and then your washer and nut are going to be on the inside of the trampoline frame. Then tighten both nuts using your 10 millimeter socket wrench or the supplied wrench tool. Repeat this for all bottom safety poles. Step six will be installing the trampoline mat as shown on page 11. For this step, I highly recommend using gloves and also be sure to use the included spring tool. Do not attempt to use your hands when installing these springs at any time. First, lie the mat out within the frame and inspect it to ensure there's no damage and all of the V-rings are present. Next, you will choose a point on the frame and mark it with the Sharpie as point number one. Then we will count 20 spots from there and mark that spot. Then count another 20 and mark that spot. And finally, another 20 and mark the last spot. Next, take the mat and mark one of the V-rings with the Sharpie to match up with our first mark on the frame. Then do the same process on the V-rings of the mat. Count 20, mark it, count 20, mark that, and again, count 20 more and mark that. And you'll start with four springs and be sure to use the included spring tool. Then make sure we use the spring with the wider end on the frame side that is marked and the smaller closed end of the spring will be attached to the V-ring on the mat. You will do this for the four spots we marked on the frame and the mat. Now here's a tip I learned the hard way. Instead of attaching the spring to the frame first and then trying to pull it to the mat side, which is wrong, be sure to hook the spring onto the V-ring first and then use the spring tool to pull the other end to the frame. It will be much easier this way. Once you have the four springs evenly spaced and connected, it should look similar to this here. Now you'll choose one of the four connected springs and move three spots to the left and attach a new spring. Then do the same for the other three spots. Keep repeating this around the mat until all the remaining springs are attached. The idea is to evenly disperse the tension and not have too many springs attached to one half of the frame and only a few attached to the other side for example. It will be faster to have the second person help with hooking the springs onto the V-rings and the frame with the second spring tool provided. Once you're done all the springs will be applied. It's very important that you do not attempt to move or lift the trampoline as it may distort the frame. Step seven will be applying the frame cover pad as shown on page 14. Simply unfold the cover pad and lay it over the springs with the warning label facing up. Once it is laid flat, we're going to attach the bungee straps to the underside of the frame located at each of the T joints and safety bars. To attach these, you're going to drop the bungee and hook between the springs on the left side of the T-joint, then pull the hook back up between the springs and hook it onto the V-ring on the first spring to the right of the T-joint. Then pull the cover pad over the frame between the safety bar and T-joints. You'll repeat this for all eight safety bar T-joint points. Next is step eight shown on page 15, which will be the safety pole installation. You will notice there are seven safety poles with a black plastic cap located at the top and then one safety pole without any cap on the end. The one without the cap will be for the basketball backboard. Place each safety pole top onto the bottom safety pole with the curved ends pointing inwards towards the trampoline mat and ensure that the holes on both safety pole upper and lower sections are lined up. Then use a screw to hold them in place. You can use the supplied screwdriver or utilize the power drill to speed up the process. Next, we will install the basketball backboard as described in step nine on page 16. First, install the basketball fixing plate to the bracket located on the back of the backboard. Line up all four holes and then using the provided bolts, screw them in to get started, but do not tighten them completely. We will need it to be loose to slide over the support rod. Next, we'll place the support rod over the upper safety pole so that the basketball support rod is facing straight up and attach it with a screw. Now at this point, it's a good time to slide the sun protector covers over each of the safety poles. Each sun protector has a wide end and a half closed end. The wide end will go over the safety pole first and then the half closed end will have enough space to fit the black plastic cap through as seen here. Once all sun covers are applied, 
We'll slide the backboard bracket over the support rod and tighten all four bolts using our 12 mm socket wrench or the supplied wrench. Step 10 is the installation of the safety net. First, we'll need to attach a safety net bar to each safety nut, which you'll see this extended nut can only be screwed onto one end of each rod. If it does not screw on easily to one end, it will attach to the other end. Do this for all 12 safety net bars and set them aside as you see here. Next, we'll unfold the safety net onto the trampoline and you'll want to position the safety net to where the zipper is on the opposite side from the basketball board. This will allow for better symmetry and ease of entry to and exit from the trampoline. Starting with one safety net bar, thread it through the top of the safety net as shown here, and then do the same for the next section of the net and screw the two ends together. Repeat this for 11 of the rods and then when you get to the final rod, there will be some tension so you'll have to bend them slightly to fit and screw together as shown here. Once the rods are all attached, you will snap them into the black cap of the safety pole so they are secured in place. Next, we need to secure the bottom of the safety net to the trampoline mat using the supplied black rope. Starting with the V-ring located to the left of the zipper on the safety net, you'll need to tie a knot to the V-ring and then thread the rope back up through these square holes at the bottom of the safety net, then thread it back down through a different square hole on the safety net and then down through the next V-ring of the mat. Continue this weaving pattern until you reach the V-ring located to the right of the zipper on the safety net. Cinch up any slack in the rope and tie a knot to secure it fully. Then attach the ladder to the frame where the zippered enclosure is located on the safety net and cover it with the safety pad. Step 11 is the last step located on page 18, and that is to visually and physically inspect everything and do a safety check before using the trampoline. Congratulations on building your new 14 foot triple tree trampoline. Be sure to take a moment, read through all the safety instructions and guidelines, as well as how to care for and maintain your new trampoline. I hope this video was helpful for you and enjoy your new trampoline.